What should everyone be most worried about tech-wise for the future and why? Artificial intelligence. The next form of intelligence being directly influenced or handled by human units. I will be obsolete. It's not the information of only you that matters. Tech's impact on our environment. I don't think people are looking at the user agreements. That collective information is very powerful. We are suffocating in content. It's not even funny. But it's also subliminal nudging. Hey there, hackers. Natasha Nell here. We're back with episode two of our special series featuring Hacker Noon's big names answering tech's big questions. In this episode, what should we be worried about in 2021? This question elicited some very interesting responses from our top contributors in the general technology category. So stay tuned for the next 10 minutes for the lowdown on everything from AI and data privacy to the internet's little known impact on the environment. Ryan Dawson is up first. My big worry is about how much data people are giving away about themselves without realizing it. I don't think people are looking at the user agreements. And that means they're not appreciating how many of their swipes and clicks are being used to recommend them more content to click on. On the one hand, that's relevance and engagement, and you could say it's better services, but it's also subliminal nudging. The drivers are not just about what content we want to see, it's also about how many ads we see, and ultimately about money. I'm also worried that all this nudging for clicks can mean that we spend more time being impulsive, distracted, and frustrated. That's concerning for our well-being, our mental health, our patience with one another, and how we work through issues as a society. The concern is less so with the technology and more about the outcomes of our ubiquitous technology. Hi there, my name is Matt Klein. I'm Director of Cultural Strategy at Sparks and Honey, and I'm nominated for Contributor of the Year for Business Strategy, Social Media, and COVID-19. My biggest fear is content overproduction. We need a movement, whether that be a person or a brand, which insists it's okay to not watch, read, or listen to it all. We are suffocating in content, all competing for our attention, with family, friends, and coworkers attempting to prioritize that list on our behalf. 500 hours of YouTube content is uploaded every minute, and 350 million tweets are sent every single minute. There's also HBO Max, Peacock, Netflix, Disney Plus, and Apple TV. And then there's countless headlines, long reads, podcasts, and newsletters, which are all also competing. And between it all are Instagram posts and TikTok snippets. That feed refreshes every single minute, every single day, every week, every month. This is an endless source of content pulling our attention in a million different directions. And it's more than attention, though. It's our brain, specifically our emotions. We're overwhelmed with conflicting emotions and reactions. A happy text interrupts our scary Netflix show. A tweet that makes us angry is quite literally positioned just pixels away from one that makes us laugh out loud. Not only are we unable to make it through and get any sense of progress through this list of content, but it's also forcing us into a conflicted mood state. And this is all only accelerating. It's going to get much worse before it gets better. If this info doesn't lie in the right hands with the right people, it can be exploited. I am Baditi Patnagar, being nominated for Contributor of the Year in Technology. The thing that I think people should be most worried about uh, tech-wise for the future is privacy, uh, your personal information and who collects it. It'll sound a bit George Orwellian, but the notion is very true. With technology landing in the hands of every person, they're sharing a lot of information. I often hear people saying, so what if my information is collected? I'm not a celebrity or otherwise I have nothing to hide. But the issue is one needs to broaden the perspective. It's not the information of only you that matters. It's the collective information of all of us that matters. That collective information is very powerful in order to predict trends, moods, opinions, votes, etc. And technology enables collecting all of that from each one of us. If this info doesn't lie in the right hands with the right people, it can be exploited and drown the world and all the rights humans stand for. Greetings, I'm Vladimir Spelivanidis. I'm the head of corporate affairs at One Ether Digital and I'm nominated uh, for Contributor of the Year in politics as well as blockchain. Uh, 
I think that the next form of intelligence being directly influenced or handled by human units is the most worrying aspect of what we refer to as the future. Uh, that because if we do handle a self-sustainable intelligence as we please, it automatically means we're subject to the same conditions away from a previous version of real life. Iterative jobs may eventually take up blue-collar jobs. Hi, this is Gajesh Naik, 7th standard student. I have been nominated for Top Tech YouTubers, Hekanun Contributor of the Year, Python, Podcast Episode of the Year, and more awards in Software Development and Technology category. The excessive research and the competitive availability of artificial intelligence, and more specifically in the world of deep learning that gives results like intelligent human beings, this may subsume the job avenues of the programmers to lawyers and web developers to composers. The mechanization of iterative jobs may eventually take up blue-collar jobs. So that is one thing that people should keep it in mind that if I don't be up, get updated myself, I will be obsolete. And by the time I am trying to master one thing, that thing will become obsolete and something new will come up. This is I think uh, the time has come now like that people should be worried about the pace of their learning. So the, the amount of research that every day is happening and some new invention is coming up every day within a single field, say of economics or statistics or in artificial intelligence or IoT or it is in blockchain. So even if I choose a particular domain, how do I keep my pace of learning so that I am updated and I can apply the real knowledge in my field so that I can develop something that can be useful and gets uh, finds a suitable place in people's life so in uh, order to be like such updated i think i should be updating myself by reading research papers and using technical knowledge that is available in terms of blogs uh, in internet or a lot of or, or into the, going into the uh, more details like cloud platforms or uh, studying articles that what are the new vendors are coming up with what new features so that is one thing that people should keep it in mind that if I don't be up, get updated myself, I will be obsolete and by the time I am trying to master one thing, that thing will become obsolete and something new will come up. So how do I keep a right balance between the old and the new? So am I having a right balance by, between, by learning the things that which are backward compatible and also I am trying to learn new things as fast as possible. I can apply it in my uh, daily life. About 10% of global energy consumption is contributed to the internet. Can you believe that? Melinda L.B. Lewis, up for Contributor of the Year, Women in Tech, and Indie Tech Journalist of the Year. I got to tell you something. I got to be quite upfront and honest with you. I am so worried about tech's impact on our environment. It's not even funny and it's not even reported that much. About 10% of global energy consumption is contributed to the internet. As everybody's flaunting new phones and the introduction of 5G, we need to come up with better solutions. This is worrying me for the sake of our planet and for the sake of all of our futures. Thank you so much, Melinda Albi Lewis and friends of Hacker Noon. There you have it, hackers, your top seven things to worry about now and into the future. How much data we're giving away without even realizing it, the resulting and related content overproduction, what our collective data is being used for, the next wave of intelligence being designed by us lowly humans, AI and automation stealing our jobs, whether or not your industry is advancing faster than you are, and the internet its taxing effect on our planet. The good news is you can find solutions to all of these problems and more on hackernoon.com. I'm Natasha. You've been listening to the Hackernoon podcast. See you on the internet.